again. It's really good to be back with you. Today I've got a dynamics problem and I'd like to talk about a centrifuge. Now you might have seen a centrifuge in a couple different places. Uh, chemistry labs typically have them. They put test tubes in them and spin them to, to uh, pull solids out of a liquid. Um, I used to work at an Air Force base and they had a centrifuge where they actually spun people. Another thing, another uh, place you see this is in governors for engines, old engines, like steam engines. If you want a, a real simple explanation of what we're looking at here, I've got the power supply for one of my cameras and this is a wire that, that uh, is attached to it. This probably isn't the best use of this, but it works. Okay, so I've got weight on a string basically here. If I spin this without hitting myself, there we go, I've got a nice steady rotational speed and it's pretty clear that the string, or the wire in this case, makes some angle from the vertical. Okay, let's see if we can get this going, and there we go. There you go. That's this angle right here. Okay? And that angle is related to the acceleration of gravity and the rotational speed of the, the arm here, in this case my wire. So I've got one of these. Let, uh, let's assume that the rotational speed is 10 radians per second, which is really humming. That's a lot and uh, for, for something this big anyway. The arm is one meter, and we're going to find uh, omega. We're going to find theta. Okay, what is theta? Well, given, fine, let's put solution down here. And this is, one, this is a neat problem because you don't actually need uh, to know any of the forces. You only need to know which direction the two uh, acceleration components are going and what their magnitudes are. Well, let's, let's draw the, the mass right here. I guess I'll call that M. Okay, so I've got the mass sitting right there. I've got one component of acceleration downwards, that's G. And I've got another one over here, that's the centrifugal acceleration, I'll call that AC. And the resulting acceleration goes down this way, and the resulting tension goes that way. All right? Because this is pinned, remember there can't be any moment at that joint there, so the acceleration vector and the tension are going to line up with each other. So that right there is theta. So there's step one. Okay, step two, let's hang some numbers on this and draw ourselves a an acceleration triangle here. There's a total. We don't need to know what a total is though. I mean, if we knew it, we wouldn't do anything with it, so there's no point in figuring it out. There's g and there's a sub c and that's theta. Well, I've got this. All I've got to do now is figure out the components. Well, g is 9.81. We all know that. And ac is r omega squared. Well, ac r omega squared. Well, let's see. r is one meter times omega squared. Well, that's 10 radians per second squared, and that's going to give me 100 meters per second squared. That's like 10 g's, a little over 10 g's, so that's a lot. Okay, now if there's a person in there, that would be an awful lot. Uh, one meter is too small to have a person in it. Um, so, got that, got that. All I need now is theta. Well, that doesn't look too hard. Tangent theta is Let's see, opposite over adjacent gives me tangent. So that's going to be r omega squared over g. And that's going to be 100 meters per second squared, 9.81 meters per second squared. And if I work that out, what I get is theta equals, make sure I use my cheat sheet here, 84, whoops, Point, basically 84.4, 84.397 degrees. That's a lot. Now that means this, this bar here is hanging out almost horizontally. And it's doing that because that's spinning pretty fast. Okay, that's a couple of revs per second. Let's change the problem a little bit. What if I knew theta and I wanted to find omega? Well, let me change this. This doesn't change. This doesn't change. That does. That doesn't. Okay, let's say that I don't know what this is. That's 45 degrees, and we're going to find omega, all right? This changes the problem just a little bit. All i got to do now is instead of solving this for theta, I'm going to solve it for omega. So I get to write, let's see, g over r tangent theta equals omega squared. Or if I want to get rid of the square, I can take the square root of both sides. And 
do that. Well, this is kind of nice because at 45 degrees, tangent theta is 1 and r is 1. So omega, whoops, there, is that better? Sorry. Um, omega equals the square root of 9.81. And that turns out to be 3.132. Radians per second. So we can do this problem either way. So we've done it one way and found the angle, done it another way and found the rotational velocity or in, uh, rotational rate in radians per second. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.